Chapter 2 of The Art of Kissing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christine G. The Art of Kissing by Will Rossiter. Chapter 2 How to Kiss. The Act Fully Described. Size of the Mouth to be Considered. Large Mouth and Those of the Rosebud Sort. The Girl Who Claws and Struggles. Poetical Directions. Dangers of Hugging. Tapping the Lips of a Mexican Senorita. Kissing a Chinese Girl. How to Receive a Kiss. Long Remembered Kisses. The Kiss in Betrothal and Marriage. Having at least learned something as to the nature of a kiss, let us seek information on how to kiss. There are various general directions. The gentleman must be taller than the lady he intends to kiss. Take her right hand in yours and draw her gently to you. Pass your left hand over her right shoulder, diagonally down across her back, under her left arm. Press her to your bosom, at the same time she will throw her head back, and you have nothing to do but lean a little forward and press your lips to hers, and then the thing is done. Don't make a noise over it, as if you were firing off shooting crackers, or pounce upon it like a hungry hawk upon an innocent dove, but gently fold the damsel in your arms without smashing her standing collar or spoiling her curls, and by a sweet pressure upon her mouth, revel in the blissfulness of your situation, without smacking your lips on it as if you would over a glass of beer. It might be well at the conclusion of the operation to ask the young woman if it was satisfactory, for we are never satisfied that her lady understands a kiss unless we have it from her own mouth. A Kentucky authority insists that a man must be in humour for the business, you want to get the idea into your head that the girl is just dying to be kissed by you and is only waiting for you to make the break. Then you want to take a good view of her mouth and see just how much of it you can take in. If she has a regular rosebud mouth, why, take it all in and throw your whole soul into one kiss. But if her mouth has the appearance of a landscape cut in two by a waterless river, then the safest plan is to take in the corners and byways and sort of divide your kiss into sections. Most girls have no end of cheek, therefore a fellow can seldom miss fire in kissing a girl on the cheek. Do not kiss her ear, as nine cases out of ten the girl will make a slight dodge, so as to impress you with the idea that you are really surprising her in your action. The result is you miss the ear, kiss her hair, and get your mouth full of ten-cent hair oil. Only actors kiss on the brow. If a girl has a pretty mouth, kiss it every time, but if her mouth is so large that you endanger your life by getting too near it, then resort to the next best thing and kiss her on the cheek. We repeat, to kiss a woman properly, the size of her mouth must be carefully gorged before proceeding to the work. Large mouth put a man to the severest test. He will be driven to his wit's end, whether to begin at one corner and conclude on the other, or to make a heroic dash at the middle and endeavour to reach both corners. The heroic dash is considered by students in the art of kissing to be the best, for it takes the least amount of time, and allowance should always be made for the struggle to get away from the kisser which, albeit only a mock effort, might inadvertently prove successful. Delicately formed mouths, with rounded lips and of velvety colour, are the easiest to kiss, and most submissive. You must never kiss a young girl if she doesn't want you to. The main ingredient that makes kissing endurable is a willingness on the part of the female. If it deepens into anxiety, so much the better. When a girl claws a man's hair and scratches his face like a little fool, drop her at once. As long as the girl doesn't claw and yell and struggle like a panther, it is perfectly safe to continue prospecting. If you are just beginning to teach a shy girl, who has only been kissed heretofore by her brothers and father, touch your lips gently to her forehead she will take this as an exhibition of profound respect. That position gained, working the way down to the lips, is as natural and easy as the cause of a log sliding down the wood flume of a lumber company. A popular comic song with the imperative title of Soccer on the Kisser states that when a man falls in love with a little turtle dove, he will linger all around her underjaw, and goes on, in a chorus, to give directions to wit. If you want to kiss her neatly, very sweetly and completely, if you want to kiss her so's to kiss her nice, when you get a chance to kiss her, make a dodge or two and miss her, then suck her on the kisser once or twice. That rhyme will do for the gallery gods. Those in the orchestra seats will appreciate the following. 
the cutest trick in a kiss that's quick is to put it where it belongs to see that it goes below the nose and knocks at the gate of songs a kiss that is cold may do for the old or pass with an air relation but one like that is a work that's flat of supererogation if you're going to kiss be sure of this that a girl has some heart in her i wouldn't give a darn for the full of a barn of kisses without a partner the point of this rhyme is to take your time kiss slowly and do it neatly if you do the thing right and are halfway bright you can win her sweet heart completely of course hugging is often a legitimate part of kissing a western writer has given us a humorous account of the dangers of hugging he claims that hugging is a comparatively modern institution and draws the line between the hug and the embrace the hug is an earnest quick impetuous contraction of the muscles of the arms and the chest when the object to be hugged lies within the circle bounded by the arms while the chest is the goal or final point of the hug the warmth of the hug is determined by the extent of the muscular contraction but a hug is not as anatomists assert terminated when the object is brought into contact with the chest on the contrary the sweeping in is but the shell of the operation the kernel is reached when the space between the hugger and the huggy is annihilated and the blade of a knife could scarcely be inserted between both surfaces the release if not skilfully managed is attended with danger and should be as gradual as the elementary pressure expressions of anguish on the part of the huggy may as a rule be regarded as hypocritical and should have no effect in inducing the hugger to diminish the pressure danger signals from the huggy without foundation may be punished by from two to three pounds additional pressure the senoritas of mexico it is said have but a faint idea of kissing the art from which so few possess the capacity of extracting the most available ecstasy an american stopping in mexico writes i one day offered to show a dark-eyed raven-haired young lady how los americanos performed the art she laughingly agreed and i advanced upon her my right arm bent at the elbow afforded my hand an opportunity of accumulating her dimpled chin gently folding back her head and throwing a look or rather a rapid series of looks of unutterable nothing into my eyes i gazed clean through hers for a moment and then with a long-drawn breath i tapped her lips it was a revelation to her she quivered visibly but instead of returning my kiss she broke away from my embrace and ran up to lock herself up frightened pleased but astonished with me it was merely a mechanical operation but after two days i saw her and she told me with a deep blush that she wished she had been born in america an american naval officer who while in japan had become smitten with a chinese girl invited her to give him a kiss finding her comprehension of his request somewhat obscure he suited the action to the word and took a delicious kiss the girl ran into another room exclaiming terrible man-eater i shall be devoured but in a moment finding herself uninjured she returned to him saying i would learn more of your american right kiss me he knew it was not right but he kept on instructing her in the right of kiss me until she knew how to do it like a native yankee girl and after that she suggested a second course remarking kiss me some more me leaky american and the lesson went on until her mamma's voice rudely awakened them from their delicious dream the concluding lines of a chinese poem show that in some circles of china at least kissing is understood oh for those blushing dimpled cheeks that match the rose in hue if one is kissed the other speaks by blushes kiss me too a man ought to know how to kiss and a girl ought to know how to receive a kiss the rev sidney smith the witty divine says we are in favour of a certain amount of shyness when a kiss is proposed but it should not be too long and when the fair one gives it let it be administered with a warmth and energy let there be soul in it if she close her eyes and sighs immediately after it the effect is greater she should be careful not to slobber a kiss but give it as a humming-bird runs his bill into a honeysuckle deep but delicate there is much virtue in a kiss when well delivered we have the memory of one we received in our youth which lasted us forty years and we believe it will be one of the last things we shall think of when we die the poets have sung of long-remembered kisses one fugitive poem entitled three kisses 
describes the lover as sitting beneath the whispering trees and speaking the tender words that rose unbidden upon his lips i gently raised her sweet pure face her eyes with radiant love-light filled that trembling kiss i'll never forget which both our hearts with rapture thrilled after ten years the sweetheart now his wife dies and he is gazing at the pale shape of clay once warm with the throb of human life softly i stoop those lips to kiss that oft have thrilled with rapturous love but they are cold and motionless no power again can make them move the last farewell caress is over e'en that cold touch is now denied a grief like waves on barren shore sweeps over me an endless tide and so the bereaved one gives way to his sad thoughts and recognizes the fact that he must struggle on alone but while his tailor's eyes with madness shine he feels the arms of his baby child stealing round his neck and the baby lips laid against his own my bonds are loosened i press the child against my breast while fall the tears beyond the throes of passion wild a ray of living hope appears sweet child thy mother's very soul was in thy kiss through worldly strife perchance men find a heavenly goal a purer love in death than life there is another anonymous fugitive poem also entitled three kisses the first of the three is sacred unto pain and on account of the many times the twain had hurt each other the second kiss is full of joy's sweet thrill we have helped each other always we always will we shall reach until we feel each other beyond all time and space we shall listen until we hear each other in every place the earth is full of messengers which love sends to and fro i kiss thee darling for all joy which we shall know the last kiss is given with the remembrance that they may die and never see each other die with no time to give any sign that our hearts are faithful to die as live token of what they will not see who see our parting breath this one last kiss my darling seals the seal of death a poetical apostrophe to the benefit of a wife's kiss is entitled angel food give me a kiss twill cure the pain and ache of the long day of weariness and toil like summer sunshine all life's shadows make my burdens lighter and my sins a soil so every day he lived an angel's food made strong and valiant by her wifely kiss to bravely put aside temptations rude you knew not whence his armour came i wis nor knows he now albeit she is gone but lives his life in brave and saintly mood the kisses which he grew and strengthened on are still to him his daily angel food and here is a description of two kisses you bent your head then close you pressed your warm and glowing lips to mine your tender hand my hair caressed when first you gave that kiss divine my heart was throbbing with delight my soul was steeping in holy bliss i gazed into your eyes so bright when first you gave me that sweet kiss in all the after years of pain when from my side you i did miss i think i see your face again when you first gave me that sweet kiss i stand again in that old lane but now the leaves are sere and yellow and with a heart of grief and pain i see you kiss another fellow in the ceremony of betrothal a kiss has played an important part in several nations a nuptial kiss in church at the conclusion of the marriage services is solemnly enjoyed by the york missal and the sarum manual in the old play of the insensate countess by marston occurs the line the kiss thou gavest me in church hair take it was also considered an honour to be the first to kiss the bride after the ceremony and all who would might contend for the prize in the collier's wedding by edward chicken we read four rustic fellows wait the while to kiss the bride at the church style when ladies lips were at the service of all it became usual to have a fragrant scented comfits or sweets of which we find frequent mention in messengers very woman occurs the following faith search your pockets and if you find there comfits of amber grease to help our kisses conclude us faulty Pliny describes the introduction of the custom to the degeneracy of the Roman ladies who, in violation of the hereditary delicacy of the females of Rome, descended to the indulgence of wine. Kissing was resorted to by husbands 
as the most courteous process to ascertain the quality of their wife's libations and carto the elder recommends the plan to the serious attention of all careful heads of families End of chapter 2